guys are going to meet up in this area and then we'll make a copy of those and put them down there as well so so let's just go ahead this blue shaft here the small diameter pin is going to go into there one of the things I noticed when I was glancing at this is that those parts happen to be kind of under the table like this if I look down straight on, on top of it and that can start to cause problems if I'm just moving things by certain mates what can actually happen is one of these parts can hide inside one of these parts and it's easy to get to but it's just visually a little bit confusing so what I'm going to do is just kind of look from above doesn't have to be perfect or exact orthographic or whatever and just slide these guys out into open space so that as I start to mate them from feature to feature we'll we'll see them and they won't all of a sudden just disappear in the block of, of metal okay so now I want to take this guy and let's put him up there fairly close zoom in a bit so you can see and grab this cylinder and mate it to this cylinder now notice we don't see the part, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And you can see it still kind of went inside the part there a little bit. Just grab that and slide it out. Also, you notice that it's backwards. That is, we wanted the small diameter to go into this small diameter hole. So all we've got to do is click this guy right here, flip mate alignment. That flips it around. Let's slide it back out again. Come here, you. Accept that, grab the surface that we want to make coincident with this surface, say OK. That guy's in place. Now this guy, you'll notice he still spins because we haven't locked that in. This guy here still goes in and out, we didn't lock that in, and that's on purpose. One of the cool things about putting these things together is they will act like they'll act in physical reality to a certain extent. And so as we start to put all these pieces together and we go to mate them, they'll, they'll align in logical ways. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's go ahead with this guy. I want to mate that cylinder to this cylinder. This one. Okay. And I'll accept that and just slide it in. Now notice it's kind of tipping and, and that can be it can be frustrating if you're trying to get control. For right now, since I know I'll fix that, I'll just kind of slide it in there where it's on the shaft. And then go ahead and give it another mate. I can't really make this surface coincident with this surface because they're on different levels. They're not going to be able to be perfectly parallel or coplanar or anything like that. So, so what I'll do though is I'll grab the surface and tell it to mate with this surface. It gives me kind of an error. It says, wait a minute, I can't do that. That's because it's defaulting to coincident. But what I really want is I want that surface to be parallel with that surface. So hit parallel. Now we see it crank around and get parallel. That's all we wanted it to do. So I say OK. And I'm leaving these parts loose. That is, they do slide around. And we already saw that these rotate and slide. Because as I start to mate them, we'll see that the relationships between them will start to actually make logical sense. So, so what I want to do next is take that guy and mate it with this guy. It assumes that I want it concentric. So let's go ahead and accept that. Slide him on up. Notice things are moving around. That's OK. I'm going to slide them into it. Let's zoom in so we can see what we're talking about. I kind of went a little, a little too far there. Now, notice that I haven't made any relationship between these cylinders. But everything else is free to move. So, because the geometry is right, that is, each of these parts was modeled to mate together, um, if I go ahead and make this cylinder and this cylinder concentric, the rest should adjust their locations and dimensions to match. So, let's see, hopefully it, it will. Grab that surface and mate it to this surface. It automatically went concentric, that was the default relationship between cylinders, and everything else moved to adjust. I think that's pretty slick. Just basically like it would work if it was loosely there and you hadn't tightened anything down yet. Notice we're not even putting hardware in this. We'll do that in a different kind of demo, but, but you get the idea. We can mate all those together and they interact with each other.
Now let's go ahead and take the other ones down at the other end. The easy way to do that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do it kind of a slow way, but that's okay. I'm gonna take if I hold down control and grab this yellow part, I can just drag a copy of it down there. And then I can grab this orange part and do the same thing. And I can grab this blue shaft and do the same thing. As long as I hold the hold it right, holding down control, grabbing the shaft. Okay, now we got those three parts down there as well. I'm not even going to go ahead and mate them. I just wanted you to see that that's easy to do. Hold down control, grab a hold of the component, slide it on down there. And you've already seen how to mate it, so I'm not going to mate those. But now we've got this whole thing mated together. And the thing I want to just kind of summarize is notice that the, the physical relationship between them is what we did to tie things down. When we were putting these pieces down here together, we attached them dovetail to dovetail, just like it would really be. When we put this bracket on, we attached it such that it was lining up with some holes. And the same with this guy, we lined up with holes. On this one here, we lined up cylinder to cylinder, shaft to hole. Um, in each case, we're just putting it together like it functionally would make sense. That's a pretty good general idea of how assembly mates works.